here in person is uh, show you what a lecture's like. So you know what it's like being at the ANU. So that's the main thing I want to do is have a class. So you've got to have to have a class to have a class. But it'll be more like a university class. We have more, I'm sorry. No worries. Stand. Maybe grab a table and put on a table. Yeah. Grab that table. Are they allowed to sit on the bench? So, the other thing about universities is they're enormous. I mean, one of the reasons I like the ANU is that it's a bit smaller than other universities. So I've also taught, I've taught at lots of universities, and Melbourne Uni, for example, is fantastic. It's a really good uni. Uh, but it's bigger. I like the ANU because it's smaller. But even a small uni is enormous, and uh, so actually there's lots of things about the university that I can't tell you because everyone who works there is very specialised. So look at the website and ask me whatever you want, and when I start giving a, a talk, you can interrupt me and ask me things then too. So, so just to practice asking me things, I'm just going to throw that at someone around. Right, could you just ask me something, just for practice? Um, how are you? Great, thank you. Um, thank you for coming to see me. Awesome, thank you. Yeah, um, Katrina and Ezra picked me up, and that made me happy. Good, good, right, so just interrupt and ask whatever you want. If people have got questions about the uni, you can ask right now. Otherwise, I'll give you stuff to ask about as we go. I should tell you the best thing about the ANU, and this just occurred to me. The best so what, what, yeah. push, what shrives your passion of your job at the university? Uh, actually, I just like talking to people. And I also like understanding things, I guess. Those two things. What does ANU stand for? Oh, sorry, Australian National University. Okay. So that's, you know, they sent me here, and it's a really good university. The best thing about it is it's not in Melbourne, so you get away from your family, and you tell them, I have to go to this university because it's the best, but actually it's just that you don't have to live with them anymore. <laughs> um, if you think of questions later, you can email me. This is my email address. Right, so um, I'm in the maths department there, and one of the things I do is give a first year course on cosmology, which is something most unis I think don't have. Um, if you want to be a cosmologist, so cosmologists study the whole universe. It's a branch of astronomy, but most of astronomy is studying really boring things like stars and planets and comets. Cosmology is better than that, so I'll talk about that in a minute, what it's like to study the whole universe. Uh, if you want to be a cosmologist or even a boring old astronomer, um, you need to know physics, but actually the best way to do it, in fact the only way to do it, is to learn a lot of maths. Just being good at physics isn't enough, so that's why I'm in the maths department. And if you want to uh, have a career as an astronomer, you, you can enrol in physics or you can enrol in maths when you get to uni, but either way we'll be doing a lot of maths courses and then eventually they'll let you look through a telescope. So cosmology is about the whole universe and it's questions like how old is it, how big is it, what size is it, and uh, the universe in some ways is quite simple. It seems to be full of a lot of things that are very similar to each other with a lot of repetition, but this, there's still a lot of things we don't understand about it, even though it's full of very similar things. So what's the universe full of? What can you see when you look up in the sky? Stars. Stars. Good. Anything else? Moons. Yeah, so the boring stuff that's close to us, like moons and planets, and stars. And you all know the sun's a star, right? The sun's a little bit bigger than an average star, but stars are all incredibly similar, actually. If you get interested in nuclear physics, you can study the differences between stars. But they fall into quite a small number of categories, so stars are incredibly well understood. Um, okay, so lots of stars, all fairly similar. Now. If you look up into the sky with a telescope, what do you see? More stars, right? Anything else? Planets. 
planets will just look bigger, yeah? And you can see some planets around other stars just recently. One of, one of the great things about cosmology and astronomy is that um, you learn more as telescopes get better, and telescopes have been getting a lot better just recently, so there's a lot of news. One of them is you can now see planets around other stars. Good. What else? So when you say planets around other stars, you mean beyond the normal planets that we see? Yep. Wow. Yep, just recently. Yeah. There's only a couple that you can literally see, um, but there's uh, now, I think, 600 or something, where you can see the star wobbling and work out what's there. Mm. Yeah. My, uh, yeah. So we now think there's lots of planets. We now think most stars have planets. And also, actually, there's lots of planets that are not around stars at all, just all over the place. Good. <laughs> yeah. All right, so what else do you see? So if you look through a, a space telescope and you look in between the stars, you'll see a lot of black. Is there anything else you'll see? Yeah? Like the black represents the dark matter. And like you could also hopefully see like some of those unknown moons, like possibly the moons outside of Earth, like possibly like Ganymede and Jupiter. Well, they're easy to see, yeah, definitely. Yeah, Ganymede is like larger than Earth. No, but it's quite big, yeah, and you can see it. Yep. Okay. <coughs> All right. What about galaxies? And you know anything about galaxies? Yeah. Like galaxies are a collection of stars, and yep. yep, good. They're, and there are millions of galaxies in the whole universe. Sort of, yeah. yeah, yeah. If I was feeling nice, I'd say yes, that's right. There, but actually, there's a way, there's a sense in which saying there are millions of galaxies is wrong. There's a lot more than millions of galaxies. So if we're doing maths, you know, it's like saying how many students are there in, in the college. Oh, you know, dozens. But that's wrong because there's hundreds, right? So how many galaxies are there? It's a lot more than millions. We actually don't know, but we, we, what we've done is we've looked at some bits of the sky very, very carefully, way, way out with good telescopes. Um, we haven't done that for the whole sky. But you know, you can extrapolate if the sky's all the same. There's at least 100 billion galaxies. And a typical galaxy has tens of billions of stars. And that's just what we call the observable universe, which is as far out as we can see. And probably past that, there's just lots more galaxies. So there are probably at least, at least 10 to the 23 stars in the universe, the one with 23 zeros after it. So mainly cosmology studies the behavior of galaxies. Because you've got these stars clumped into galaxies. You all know what a galaxy looks like? Yeah, right. So we've got these stars clumped into big galaxies.